Hello everyone, I am Bets Golden. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about distress embossing glazes. And these are relatively new in the craft industry. Tim Holtz came out with them with Ranger. They are so cool. And I'm going to do a couple demos on what makes them different and unique versus your regular type uh, embossing powder and then also a clear embossing powder. Then at the end, we're going to make a card in which we utilize this and I show you a couple techniques that you can do and hopefully it'll kind of bring it all home. So this might be a little bit of a longer video. I'm gonna do the demos in the beginning to just show and compare. But right now, as of right now, <laughs> there are 14 different embossing glazes out. Um, he is planning on, I guess they're coming, planning on introducing a new one every so often. So the line is going to uh, get more, you're gonna have even more, an extensive line. But today for this purpose, I'm going to be demonstrating with th these three crackling campfire, uh, speckled egg and hickory smoke. And these two are gonna be more towards the project into this video. And this is gonna be for demo purposes today, just to show kind of the differences and whatnot. Um, these you can find at Ranger. You can also find them at scrapbook.com. I'll have links for you provided down below. And we're also going to go over the dabber as well as the embossing powders. I just wanna tell you that the information that I am sharing with you in this video is going to be good regardless of the future colors that Distress Line comes out with for the glazes. And uh, this will be relevant from here on forward. So we're just going to concentrate on different techniques and what makes these unique. And one of the things that we need to start off with is how the heck do you get the glaze to glaze? And there are a couple different ways to do that. You can use an embossing dabber or you can do these pins. In addition, any kind of embossing ink that you find in an ink pad will work as well. It's pretty much all the same formula, just in a couple different um, ways to get it onto your paper or your substrate. This has a obviously like a little dauber end and we're gonna use this today. And then we're also gonna be using the embossing pins, but we're gonna do that a little bit later in the project. But I just wanted to tell you something that you might wanna consider. When you get the embossing pins, they have this beautiful um, just white tip on it, okay? And it comes in two different tips. You have the brush tip, and then in addition to that, you also have a bullet tip. Now, in order to keep your tips clear, you're going to want to not go over any kind of pigment ink with it because it will pick up the ink. And this is what happens when you do that. I did this and now I have my tips are what would be considered as contaminated. And every time I use it, it does leave a little bit of a trail of this black. And what I had done was I had used a pigmented ink pad, a Versa, I think it was a, a Versa pad that was black pigment. I embossed over it, but it didn't emboss all of that black. So it picked it up and now I am contaminating other projects with it. But that doesn't mean that's bad. If that happens to you, I actually like it. I'm probably going to be using these today in my project because what it does is it allows enough color down to make sure that when you're coloring in an image, you get your embossing pen and your ink all over the place okay so there is a i find it beneficial but i did go ahead and order myself two more that were not contaminated because i don't always want there to be a gray hue down right all right so let's do some comparing right now and the first thing i'm going to do with the embossing dabber is i'm going to just compare the glaze and again i'm just showing the glaze and then also the clear embossing powder over the embossed with over embossing ink and to do this particular project or demo i'm going to use this stamp set it's by dina wakely media it's her new one and it's called everyone is welcome it's from this and this can also be found at ranger i love these because they're a nice rubber mounted stamp so for this one i'm going to go ahead and first go over it with the clear, and then I'll go over it with the um, campfire. And when you use the dabber, you don't need to 
like really press a ton out each time. Just go over it like so. And you'll have about 10 minutes to work. It does eventually dry. So let's go ahead and just do this with the clear first. So you can see what that looks like. And so just doing some pressure on that. Then I'm gonna take my clear, go over it like so, and then we'll heat set. All right, so this has been heat set. Can't really see it, it leaves a nice watermark, right? So let's go ahead and do that same technique now with the embossing glaze in the crackling campfire. So once again, I'm just going to take my dabber and just kind of run it all over the place like so. Go ahead and just stamp this out. And then I'm going to take my glaze and cover it. Now, the glaze and a regular traditional embossing powder is different. With the, embo with the embossing glaze, you're gonna be able to see through it. There's a translucent to it and the, the regular embossing powder is straight up just opaque and you can't see anything through it all right and we're going to do a demo with that a little later so you can see exactly what i am talking about so let me heat this set is this. that crackling fire embossing glaze and it has been just with that clear dabber and this we're gonna refer back to this a little bit later when we go ahead and use our Distress Oxide in the same color and put a glaze on it so you can kind of see the difference. And then there it is again with the clear. All right, so both of these are, believe it or not, you can see through them. They're transparent, which means you can let light through, okay? So this isn't completely opaque. There's the transparency level to it. I think that's the right term. All right, so we're gonna move along from here, and I just wanna show you, basically, this is going, the next thing is gonna demonstrate what a glaze versus a regular embossing powder does, okay? So you're gonna notice that you're gonna be able to see through some of this glaze, and I'm pulling in this penny color. This is by um, Brutus Monroe, and this is the most comparable embossing powder that I had. Now, both of these technically are an embossing powder. They call this a glaze because literally it has a glaze effect. It gives a tint of a color, whereas an embossing powder gives the full-fledged coverage. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to take a color that is completely opposite, which is peacock feathers. And this is very much so an opposite color of both of these. And so you're gonna be able to see just how it's different. And we're going to also, for a baseline, emboss it with the clear embossing powder as well, just so you can see what it is. Kind of like a point of reference on what it should like look like in its purest form as it is embossed. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and use this st same stamp set by Dina Wakely, which is everyone is welcome. I'm just doing a different stamp. I love peacock feathers, the color in general, I just have to say, I think it is absolutely beautiful. And so for this one, I'm just going to do this on a regular, oh, this is white Nina cardstock, by the way, you guys, it's a smooth, it's the Nina cardstock, which is the popular um, sacred one that's Copic friendly and everything, but that's what I'm stamping on today. That's all these little samples are being made on. I hadn't mentioned it. So I'm going to go ahead and just emboss this in a clear so that we can get a point of reference on what this just looks like embossed in its purest form. So this is that peacock feathers and it has been embossed with the clear embossing powder. Now let's go ahead and emboss it with the Brutus Monroe Penny embossing powder and see what that does. So once again, I'm just going to take my Nina White cardstock that I have right here. I'll set this aside for a point of reference. I'm gonna use that same stamp again from Dina Wakely, the everyone is welcome line. And I'm just gonna ink it up. And let's just take and do a nice covering of this penny. 
And again, it's not a perfect match because I didn't really have anything else like that campfire. Now, it's very interesting because not all of it actually picked up on this Distress Oxide. It may have dried. I live in the desert. So I'm going to try to get as much coverage on it as I can. There we go. And so some of that blue is going to pop through simply where it's not covered. And then I'm going to go ahead and just heat set this with my heat. So as you can see, it embossed in some areas. And what makes embossing possible is that the surface is wet. And obviously my Distress Oxide dried a little bit quick and I am in the desert, so it is a super dry environment. But take a look at that. If you notice where the penny had laid, you cannot see any of that undertone, that peacock feathers through it. There is none of that beautiful blue shining through. It hasn't even compromised the tone or shading or color of that cut the embossing powder. It's because this is a completely opaque, doesn't allow light to transfer through type powder. Now we're going to go ahead with the same color and lay down some crackling campfire and see what that does. If you can see any of this peacock through or if the color changes. So once again, just going to take my stamp, my peacock feather, we're going to lay this out. If you guys haven't taken, um, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I certainly hope that you do so. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well as liking this video if you enjoy it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Also, it really helps me out if you share the video. It helps me grow and able to keep my content free and not having to go over to something like Patreon where I have to charge because I can make money off of the ad revenue from um, YouTube. Anyway, just a little bit of a plea there for your help and then also uh, a great way to have you guys um, support your content creators on YouTube that you enjoy watching. Make sure you're always subscribed to their channel. All right, so I'm really laying that on thick, right? And then again, it didn't cover all the areas because obviously it dried a little bit quick. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead with my heat gun and I'm going to set it. This has now been set and I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I can definitely see a difference. The way that this campfire glaze went on or crackling campfire is it definitely glazed it. So that peacock feathers is shining through. This is what it would look like if it was regularly embossed, right? Is shining through underneath of the embossing glaze. And this is what that crackling campfire looks like embossed alone without any color under it whatsoever. And then this is what a regular embossing powder looks like. You can't see any of that peacock feather underneath of it. It's like this literally pops more than this one does. All right, so there's that little demo. So moving on from here, why don't we go ahead and take our Crackling Campfire Distress Oxide and stamp an image in this with Crackling Campfire Embossing Glaze and then also with a clear just to see what that does. All right, so let's take some of this beautiful Crackling Campfire and I'm just going to really Get this on here pretty well. Again, I'm still using the same stamp pad or stamp set, I should say. And I'm just going to take it like so. And I'll do the clear first, all right? So this one, it's gonna be just with the clear. So we haven't stamped with the Distress Oxide. This is what it looked like with the clear and the Distressed um, Embossing Glaze in Crackling Campfire. And so now we're actually stamping the Distress Oxide in clear, in clear um, 
embossing powder. So we're switching it, all right? And then we'll go ahead and do it with the same color Distress Oxide over it. All right, so let's do this one first. This is what the Distress Oxide in Cramp Crackling Campfire with clear embossing powder over it looks like. Now, let's take and compare what the clear like the clear ink that we used with the crackling campfire over it looks like. Very, very similar. There is a touch more vibrancy to this one than this, okay? So that's really interesting to me. So this is clear with uh, clear ink with crackling campfire over it. This is Crackling Campfire Distress Oxide ink with clear over it. So we just kind of reversed it. Uh, we laid clear and then put color, the glaze on, and for this one we put the color down and put the, the clear over. But I thought that that would just be an interesting comparison. So now what we're gonna do, all right, is we're gonna take our Distress Oxide and Crackling, crackling Campfire, stamp it out, and we're going to use the Crackling Campfire embossing glaze on top of that and see if what, if or what the difference is. So I've stamped it out in my Crackling Campfire Distress Oxide and now I'm going over with my Crackling Campfire Distress Glaze and we're just going to emboss this out and let's see what the difference is, if there is a difference between the other two samples that we did. With the Crackling Campfire, both the Distress Oxide and the Glaze, that is a beautiful, vibrant color. And let's compare it to the other two. So this is, I have it written down in the back, you guys, so I remember. This is the Distress Oxide with the clear on top. Okay, I can definitely see a difference. This color is by far extremely vibrant compared to this one. And then this one right here was that clear ink, the clear dabber embossing ink with the campfire over top of it. And so the vibrancy on this is even less. So if you really want your color to pop the same color Definitely the glaze is, is going to do that for you. But if I just lay them all out like so, if I just have these three like so, I really can tell a difference in this end color. And these two, not so much. Let me bring the camera in just a little bit for you so you can kind of line it up side by side and just take a look right now at that. I can tell where I am that this one, super vibrant, and that is the Distress Oxide with that matching glaze. This one is over with the clear on top of the color, and this is the clear with the color on top. So as far as vibrancy goes, this is on the less end of the spectrum. It almost looks softer, and this is definitely more on the opposite end with a bolder and a vibrant color. Now, we're gonna do one more demonstration with this technique or with this ink and, well, I should say embo the embossing glaze. A lot of people are like, well, what happens if you put it over black? So let's take a look at that and we're going to use a stamp. I'm just gonna go ahead and use black suit for this. I'm gonna set these aside. And for this particular, we're just gonna use this piece of cardstock right here. So I'm going to use black suit with it and I'm going to cover it with the campfire crackling embossing glaze and then also with a clear just so you can see if there's a difference. There might not be a difference. I've gone ahead with that black suit and now the first one I'm going to do over it just because I still see a little bit of that crackling campfire in the bottom of my little pan. I'll just go over it first with this crackling campfire and let's see what this does with this black color. And then we'll go ahead and go over it That's with what it looks clear. like with the crackling campfire over it. It's a glaze. I can definitely still see that black. However, I kind of see that hint of 
the campfire as well. And maybe it's because it's embossed right here over a white area. Perhaps the paper was a bit moist and that's why it embossed right there and I can see it. So let's go ahead and do uh, the, this on the up other side with our black suit and our stamp. And let's do the clear embossing powder on this one. And let's just see if we can notice a difference, if there is a difference on black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and this time just do the opposite direction with the black suit. And again, that's what it looks like not embossed, right? And that was a pretty good coverage right there. Let's go ahead and just see what happens. That, that is just straight up clear embossing powder over the black. I can really, really see a difference on this. I don't know if you can with the camera, but this one looks a more it's almost like a reddish undertone which would make sense because crackling campfire is red and this one is pure straight up black so let's go ahead and just compare some like this look at that so that is the the uh the colored oxide as well as the glaze look at that i can see i can see the comparison there and then this one is just the clear embossing glaze with it. So I can really tell a difference on this. How interesting. So it definitely interacts with your black differently than a clear embossing black does. All right. Now that we've gotten the technicality portion of this video out of the way and we've gone over and we have played with our um, glazes and we've compared them and whatnot, let's create something. So I am going to create a card front using this stamp by Picket Fences. It's called Walk, Crawl, Run. I really like it and we're going to use our embossing glazes and our distress oxides to create a really cool card. And we're also going to go ahead and pull in um, our distress embossing pins for this technique. So I'm using this Picket Fences stamp, which is Walk, Crawl, or Run. It's right over here. And I pulled out my little misty corners because this lines up absolutely perfectly on a four and a half by, I mean, a 4.25 by five and a half inch card front. But it's super sticky because it is a cling foam. And when I pull it up, sometimes the paper comes up with it. So I wanted to make sure that I just have the ability to pop it right back in in case I need to restamp it. So I just snug these corners right up like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some black suit on this to stamp. And then I'm also going to use some of this distress glaze in hickory smoke on top of this. And we're gonna do a really fun resist technique and we're just gonna uh, create this really cool card front in which we use the resist technique and then also we're going to bring our distress oxides back to life at the end because we're gonna create the background opposite after we actually get our image all stamped and our, um, and basically our main um, image done. And then we're gonna go back through and fill, in it, fill it in. All right, so as you can tell, I need to go ahead and get a little bit more down here so it didn't quite stamp out entirely. I don't know if what I just said made sense. We're gonna do our background last. That's what I mean to say. But when we do so, we're going to use our Distress Oxides in coordinating colors and distress oxides are basically after you get them wet they get ox oxized which means they lose some of their 
color, they get kind of white and chalky, really pretty. And we're gonna pull some of that vibrancy back in with a uh, technique. I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so let's see, how's this? That looks pretty darn good. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside for now. And then we're going to just take our Hickory Smoke Embossing Distress Embossing Glaze and put this down and we'll emboss it. And for this technique, we're going to actually go ahead and use those Distress Embossing Pins. So let me emboss yeah, this. Really great coverage on this. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull out my embossing pins and we're going to color this image in actually with are distress glazes. This is such a fun technique. It kills two birds with one stone. It gives beautiful coverage, color to it. It also provides a resist technique for creating the background for lazy folks like me who don't necessarily want to mask things off but want to create a beautiful uh, flat type card that can be sent through the mail. So I'm going to be using the hickory smoke again to just color in some of the rubber on the bottom of the soles of the shoes, you know? And then we're going to use speckled egg and also the crackling campfire to color in the shoelaces as well as the the um, the shoe cloth itself, so to speak. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use my embossing pins, and I want to actually know where I'm coloring, so I'm using those that um, the the pins that I I accidentally contaminated the first time I used them. So there is some color that I'm laying down with this. But since this is a glaze, when I go ahead and color this in and add that hickory smoke on top of the glazed black, you're still going to be able to see that black that I originally laid down, the colors that I originally laid down, the black isn't gonna get covered up by this technique at all. I can literally color over it and be okay. So I'm just taking and I'm going to emboss first. I'm going to emboss in sections. So for this technique, I'm coloring in all of this and I can see exactly where I'm coloring because I have tainted the end of my pin, right? So this is how you definitely can make a whoops work for you. Now, this embossing ink, again, will eventually dry. So you have about mm, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on where you are in the, the country and whatnot, to get your color laid out, okay? So I have this laid out, and up there, I see I didn't quite get all of the color up there, so I want to just... There we go. Now it's completely covered and I'm going to go ahead and just heat set this first. So check that out. I was able to get the base colored and look, since it's a glaze, this is what makes this so cool. Since this is a glaze, it did not cover up those black lines that we had embossed with already with that black suit. So you can still see that color popping through because it's a glaze. Had I laid down an, an, a regular embossing powder that is opaque, it doesn't allow light to pass through and you would not be able to see any of those details that would have been completely lost. So that's why this is so cool. And this is why I really, really love this. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to use my um, my pen and I'm going to just color in my shoelaces as well as my um, tip of my toe with the um, crackling campfire. Okay, so I got a little bit sloppy with how I colored it in, but look at that. Isn't that so cool? Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and actually, you can actually do this in the beginning if you want. Just take a static pouch and run it all over your image and that way it'll allow your color to only pop through where you want it to pop through and um, you won't have any additional uh, moisture in spots where your embossing powder could stick. 
so it'll just cause your color to go where you need it to go. So from here, I'm actually going to take this one, which is speckled egg, and I really want those those to pop, the bottom of the, like the tips of the toes, you know, to pop. And so I'm going to take my speckled egg and I'm going to color in the cloth, but I'm also going to cover over that embossed area that I did with the crackling uh, campfire on the, shoelaces and that will color and kind of mute it all out right so i'm just taking this at this this point this dabber and i'm going over the shoe like so and i'm going to go ahead and just cover that with my speckled egg and then heat set it. So since this is a glaze, all of that color is going to pop through on the bottom just like I want it to. And I'm also going to get a different shade where the white is. All right. So this is going to be really, really cool looking. And then after I heat set it, if I have some spots that are still white, I can go back over and heat set that out as well. All right, so I do have to go over it again in some of the white spots, but as you can tell, it changed the color of our shoelaces because it layered on that speckled egg over, which is what I wanted it to do, right? And so it blends in. I like how that looks with the toe and also the speckled egg. It just kind of, it just makes it all blend like really nicely together. So I'm going through with my pen at this point and I'm just hitting those spots that I didn't get any of the dabber in the first time. And I'm gonna go over this area once again with the speckled egg. And you may be like, well, that looks muted. That's because there's powder up there. That's why that looks so muted. So I'm just gonna go on through and pick up on those spots that I missed. Now we have our shoes all colored in. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna trim this down to four inches by 5.25 inches so that it will fit nicely on a card front. Once I get it trimmed down, we're gonna go ahead and create the background using that resist technique that I told you about in the beginning, which makes this glaze even more cool because you can color in your images, still be able to see your details, and then also you can get lazy with your background and not have to mask and do what we're gonna do next. My um, card front down, and now we're gonna use camp, um, Crackling Campfire, Wild Honey, and Faded Jean for this next technique. And we're just gonna go in and blend in some of this color. And so to do so, I'm just gonna hit it in some spots like so. And then I'm going to take a clean, dry paper towel and just wipe it off of this distressed, like the area that was embossed. But I do wanna add a little bit of water on it, just in some spots. And I'm just gonna wipe it away on my image and since it is resisted because it's embossed totally works and i'm going to heat set this because i want to go ahead and layer on some more colors so i got my wild honey down first and with distress oxide the reason why i'm doing this with distress oxide and not distress ink is because you can layer on colors and the colors will continue to pop through a bit um, and they won't blend together, so to speak. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this campfire here. And there's not a lot of area that I need to be too concerned with working with right now. I mean, the background pretty much is small, so this is gonna be relatively easy. I'm just gonna spray it move it around a little bit 
and heat set it and then we're gonna finish off with our faded right, jeans. Let's finish off with the faded jeans and the distress oxide. And then I'm gonna show you how you can, I wanna bring the vibrancy back into this. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that as well. But I'm just layering this on. I really wanted to concentrate on the base of this area because it's such a nice contrast with that beautiful crackling campfire. And then we'll just do a little pop right up there. And then once again, I'm just going to take and just rub off of that distress, um, I mean, of the, the glazed area, like so, so that that totally pops through. And then I'm going to just add some water on just to get it to move a little. There we go. Kind of want that right there to move a little bit more and then i'm gonna pop in perhaps some more like so get that to blend through there we go all right and then same here with this down here definitely There we go, and I'm gonna go ahead and heat set this. Alrighty, so from here, I'm actually gonna take my big pad. I love this thing, it's huge. It's wonderful when you want to really cover a large ink pad uh, quickly, or if you don't wanna sit there and like dab it up, I just plop the whole stamp in and boom, there we go. And I'm just going to ink the edges. This is another reason why I really like this. This is an archival ink, so it's waterproof, it's permanent. So it's gonna be able to go on that resist technique that we did just fine on those areas that have that resist on it. And I'm just inking the edges. I just like a little bit of finality to my project. I don't even know if that makes any sense, y'all. Uh, sometimes my words come out wrong, you know? All right, so my 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 edges are inked, and from here, I don't, I want to bring this vibrancy back into my oxide areas because whenever you use a distress oxide, especially if you add water to it, it does create a chalky finish, and I always like to just bring some of that vibrancy back, and so I'm just going to use this micro glaze. And I'm just putting it on with my finger. I'm making sure that my finger is clean or else you will get bacterial growth in your product if your fingers are not clean. So if you use this without a dabber, I personally like to use my finger instead without a dabber simply because um, it just uses less product. Whenever I use one of these sponge tip dabbers, it just uses way too much product and I go through it too quickly. So I just like to use my finger and that way I use less. And then from here, I'm just going to take and I rub this all in, right? I'm gonna take a clean part of my white, my uh, paper towel, and I'm just going to lift that color away. And what that does is it brings back that vibrancy into my Distress Oxides and it also makes it waterproof. So if I were to throw any water down on this, it would not interact whatsoever with that oxide. Um, it's completely waterproof. This is also a great way to seal your Distress inks because you can get your Distress inks to be perfect where you want them. You don't want them to move anymore. Throw some of this micro glaze on and you are good to go. It will not move anymore. So let's go ahead and put this on our card front and finish this card. All right, so I finished off the card. I put it on this kind of a gray type card base. I cut down from an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I just cut it in half and then scored it. And then then I did a sentiment strip, sometimes life, and shoes can both stink. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope that now you have a better understanding of the differences between embossing glazes as well as embossing powder. Until next time, I'm Betts Golden. Happy crafting.